This is a piece about the person you shouldn't fall in love with. The person you really shouldn't fall in love with. Picture, if you will, this boy and this girl and this other boy. Surely that's happiness at 200%. Is it? Well, either that or nightmare. Flashback one. And it's that day when I was just going down the street and you know how it is when people change their style and you're quite shy so you don't recognise them. So you don't look at them straight, so you don't see who it is and then there's this figure sauntering down the road towards you and you're aware he's beautiful but of course you're not going to look at him or meet his eye because that would be... <laughs> and then he says, hey, here, I'm, here am I with my special jaunty walk, especially for you and, and then you see it's him. Him with his hair longer than you've ever seen it before. Him with jeans instead of his usual 19th century explorer trousers. An open shirt instead of his Biggles jacket. And oh my God, does he look cool. Worse than that, he throws his arms wide and you step into the embrace and you can feel his arms around you tight and you can feel his warmth against yours and you hold him far too close and far too long and all the time you have this awful feeling that everybody in the street is looking out from their neck curtains knowing that you already have a partner and thinking, how dodgy is that? But you don't care because he is holding you far too close and far too long and you know it's something you'll always treasure and you can't help wondering if it's going anywhere but where could it go because and nothing seems to matter for this one moment except of course that it does matter dreadfully and that's why this is a moment and not an hour or an afternoon or a day with a night <laughs> flashback number two things you don't want to remember. And there you are with some gear he's never seen before, a style he won't know and will love. Well, let's face it, you partly did it for him. And of course, he opens the door and the look on his face tells you you got it right. You're all going to a club and he says you'll be the belle of the ball like he's your mum or something. And let's face it, he's a Virgo and he paints. As far as you're concerned, he is your mum. And that's the problem. And after dancing half the night away, there's really no room left in this packed and sweaty club, especially not in this dark corner where the best seats are. And there's your lover sitting opposite with elbows on the table looking cool. And then there's him and he squeezes in beside you on the not plush velvet with his bare arms showing and the sweat pouring off him. And there you are with something that's slashed open at the side so his skin is against your skin. And he's shedding water like he's a leaking kettle recently boiled. And I'm thinking, God, all I want to do right now is be drenched in your sweat. Wow. Oh, what a thrill it is to be drenched in your sweat. And how sad is that? Because most of my current ambitions seem to circle around being drenched in your sweat, which I know would taste sweeter than any honey. Number three. And then when he gets engaged, and of course when you meet her, she hates you, though you try your very best, and sweet summer strawberries have never tasted so bitter as the jealousy you feel every time she touches him. The jealousy you never ever want to inflict on your own lover by touching him. And all she reminds you of is a weird mixture of yourself and his mum with the good bits taken out. But you know that's not fair, and it can't really be true. But the truth is that he's got a big thing about his mum and you have crept with partial success into that space that he demands his girlfriends occupy and it's reciprocal. In fact, you both are looking for new mothers or replicant mothers and you're both so young and so stupid that in each other you have this mother thing going on. In fact, you both know that to grow up or move on you have to pretend someone else is your mother and so you do and let's face it, that makes everything even messier. couple of flashbacks, these ones are shorter. Flashback number four. To know with every sense, including the sixth. To know with the language of the body, to know with the spirit and the heart. To read in the gaze and the tone, the hold of a hand, the distance or the lack of it between us. To know and to know for sure that he wants you with the same, not as strong, sure. 
with the same terrible desire with which you want him. To know and be told with everything, save words. Last one. How could I forget and never want to remember that Christmas when you and I had so had enough, couldn't bear to keep on almost touching but never meeting one more time. Snapping, getting on each other's nerves, moody, irritable with restrained emotions. And when you walked out, I didn't know that you would never come back. But somehow later, I guessed, of course, it had to break. Everyone said it would. And to paraphrase a song you once played me, you gotta get over it, over it, over it, over it.